Okay. All right, share the screen. Oh, there's a beauty. Look at that. Wow. You know, I, I, uh, I show a lot of birds in this. I know there's a bird mm. class, but I, you know, this is, uh, I learned so much in this class and it's such a better class that uh, um, I haven't been going to the bird class lately. <laughs> but, yeah, Harris's hawk. Fantastic. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So he's got a monitor on him, huh? Yeah, he's got a little monitor on him. Yeah. It almost looks uh, metallic. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Let me stop for an airplane. Yeah, let me stop for. Yeah, it does. Let me stop for a second here. It looks like my cursor app stopped, and it's not in the in the top here anymore. So I'm gonna have to just. Yeah, there it is. I must have hit quit or something on it. All right, there we go. Uh, Can I ask? Did you what kind of lighting? It was uh, like uh, 1030 lighting. <laughs> so that's just natural light. That's natural light, yes. Why? That's beautiful. It's pretty much, you know, you can, it's kind of pretty much, the sun's pretty high in the sky there. Now, I will say that I did use like subject select, and then I darkened the background to make the bird pop a little bit more. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah. Okay. Must have been pretty yeah. close to them there, right? Pretty close, yeah. So this is a, you know, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I went to the, you know, the Desert Museum. Oh, so this is that raptor show. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. Yeah, I may go there this weekend with my brother. So yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. I think it's over now. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess I better check before I start looking at all that gear. Would you use your two to six hundred? Yeah, that's the two to six hundred. Oh, yeah. my yeah. favorite bird lens. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, I guess I better call ahead then. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up on that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's over. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you go into the next one, and it's another Harris hawk, and he's just mm -hmm. eating a little little bird there. Big bird eats mm -hmm. little bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say there when I was there quite a few years ago. One of the Harris hawks flew right across my shoulder. His wings actually touched touched my head. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> well, they say you're not supposed to raise your hands or your camera above your head. And one day I was there and I was looking through my you know telephoto lens and the bird was flying toward me and he ran into my, and it wasn't above my head. His uh, feet, I don't know if it was on purpose or what, hit, hit my telephoto lens. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't get the shot either. I was like, it was coming <laughs> back so fast. <laughs> yeah, they, they still do that. Hope you did. Yeah. Hmm. They still do the Harris Hawks in pairs because they usually they have a fam family of them. Yeah. Yeah, the whole family. Like, there's That's like good. a family of them. And they, I think there's about, they had like four of them or four yeah. or five. I think yeah. it's four. And they turn, they turn them all loose together and they were fighting among themselves. And, and <laughs> well, right. prob probably stopping it for the summer. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, they do stop it for the summer. Yeah, it's probably too hot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was thinking about the 98, 100 degrees walking around there too. So, yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, we'll... Jim, I was just wondering uh, what your focal, I'm not the focal length, but your f stop. I like a 7.1. 7.1. Yeah, probably like a seven. That's my standard. So that's kind of like standard then, huh? Yeah, for me, yeah, pretty much a shot like that. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do six eight, but as soon as you zoom in, it was a seven one anyway. So yeah. So now I just keep it a seven one and it's the same all the way through your zoom right. range. Yeah, cool. Uh, I just did this one a few minutes ago because oh. I wanted to have something that wasn't a bird, and I just kind of quickly <laughs> cranked it out. Uh, I put a, an effect, a uh, topaz effect on the cactus, and then I just did a color range uh, for the, it was a brown stucco, and so I just kind of clicked on color range and changed the color of the background a little bit, just for the mm -hmm. heck of it, just mm -hmm. to, yeah, nice. I tried to use complementary blue and yellow yeah. colors, so. Very yeah, that's really, that's really nice. I'm really liking this effect. Yeah. You're doing Very it. nice and yeah. soft. Yeah. yeah, real soft. Nice. Do you remember what you did in Topaz? 
it was a new effect that I hadn't used before. Uh, I started out, you know, uh, I started looking at those cartoon ones that uh, Jim used last week, but I didn't mm -hmm. like those. And then uh, I can't remember. It was a, just a, a new one. I, 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 I can maybe go back yeah. and figure it out, but I should, I should write these things down, but yeah, uh, memory isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm still having that issue where I go to the other room to get something and can't remember what the heck I want. <laughs> <laughs> that work all the way back. I remember I have to go all the way back again. Yeah. Never fails. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. uh, I always enjoy wood ducks are always fun to shoot. Mm. And I shot this one last yeah. week uh, at Reed Park. And, oh. uh, you know, the... Uh, that part on the bill is just white. So I actually went in, <laughs> changed the color and put a little bit of, tiny bit of pink yeah. into it. Cause it's just, you know, it, it truly is white but it's just kind of annoying it's so bright white. So I toned uh, it down a little bit. Yeah, now you zero in around this more. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. It's, a, it's a neat uh, angle. Straight yeah, on. it's I've got I took a lot of angles, but that one's you really the eyes look kind of mm -hmm. popping out of his head there a little bit. So hey Jim, I was wondering if the shadow that he's his beak is casting yeah. along his breast there. Yeah. Um what could be done to like lighten that up? Well, I guess, yeah. Um you could select it and open it up a bit, but yeah, just uh, I don't know how much detail is going to be there. We can take a look. Yeah, you, I think you could select it and open it up a little bit. Yeah, maybe With, uh, maybe both the exposure slider and the shadow slider mm -hmm. using the combination of those, and maybe even the black slider. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I usually go for shadow and black first, uh, and maybe uh, counter it with some white. Uh, exposure, I, I like to hold for the last because it's so much so fast that uh, sometimes it's more than you want. Uh, okay, we're going to go to filter and camera raw. And I'm going to go up here to my local brush. And let's see here. It's on auto masking. So if I, uh, if I just hold it over this black area, I should... Yep, it'll mask pretty nicely. And then if I hold my negative, get rid of some of this on the edge. There we go. Okay, so we want to try and open this up. First, we'll do the shadows. It's, it's getting kind of ghosty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and the black's probably going to really, yeah, it's going to get kind of muddy. Um, maybe we, we open it up with some whites and take the blacks down a little bit. And see if, what contrast might do. There we go. And the only other thing I would try would be some clarity. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go, the clarity. I wouldn't have thought of the clarity. So. Yeah, clarity hmm. gives you that apparent contrast by uh, lightening the whites and darkening the darks. Now, dehaze is going to darken it up again. But if you go backwards, negative dehaze, there you go. Hmm. And I would probably add a little black in hmm. so it's not so hollow. It's getting now, does shadow detail take any of that up? You're working in raw. Yeah. See, it says shadows here. I'm up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit because I think it's too much. And then black. Maybe I'll come back a little bit with black. Yeah, somewhere about like that. So let's let's have a look at that. So that's the before and after. Yeah. I think that might be enough. Yeah. That wouldn't not, overdo it. Yeah. So there you go. It's not yeah. Really good. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how much of this uh, you can do in elements. Uh, is the camera around the same in elements, Wendell? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's got as many. Of course, I've only had back in elements 12, so they Probably have added a lot of stuff since yeah. then. Yeah, because Bonnie, you're using elements, right? Yeah, and I'm just, I'm 14. 
but it has black and white and shadow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it has that local masking ability or not. I don't think so. At least I don't know how to do that. Yeah, the other, the other option would be to um, uh, just make a copy layer, you know, duplicate the layer. And uh, do you work with masks and layers? Do you, if you no. Know? Okay. <laughs> We can, My show goal, you, but... we can show you that too. All right. So yeah, just a quickie here. Uh, all right. Then I'll, I'll, I'll do the old way. So basically I'll, I come in here uh, and I'm just going to drag this down to this plus sign here to duplicate it. I don't know how you do it in elements, but basically make yourself a yeah. copy. Yeah. And then, uh, I'm going to do the one underneath because I'm going to mask the one on top pull it through so I'm going to turn the one on top off and make sure the one underneath is highlighted and then basically I'll just do the same thing real quick here so um, I would probably uh, if I was just doing it with uh, the old-fashioned way uh, without using uh, the uh, camera raw I would probably just go in and, and just look at the detail here and use yeah, curves. that's that's and just great. use curves, okay, and kind of work it that way. See, that's getting milky, so you don't want to do too much of that, okay. And then I would take this. Actually, I don't even need to duplicate it. There's 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 a mask on the curve, okay, and if you if you hold down um, Command I, it'll invert it. Now it's totally black. And then you take a white brush, okay, and just paint it in. Hmm. Hmm. That's right. So there you go. Yeah, that's great. Black and so that's the old-fashioned way of doing it. Before then, we had all those oh, nice, can't wait. nice <laughs> gadgets and things in camera raw that do a lot of it for you, and then. Once you see it, you can adjust it and it'll just adjust the area that you've got masked. So you see how that works, Bonnie? How did you get this uh, thing that you're working on right now? The curve? Uh, yeah. it's, it's an adjustment layer. I'm not sure how you get it in elements. If, if it yeah. won't let you do curves, there's also, yeah. um, uh, well, down here in Photoshop, there's a little like, it looks like a yin yang sign. Um, that's where you get them all. You can do brightness, contrast, you can do levels, you can do curves, exposure, vibrance, uh, yeah. they're, they're in sets. Uh, so basically your, your overall adjustments are here and then your color adjustments are here. Um, so I can get in, excuse me, in elements uh, going up to one of the tabs like image or something like that gives a like the curves and levels option uh, too uh, off the top. Uh, now the other thing you can do, um, so you can turn it on and off to see it, but once it's, uh, now I think you can do this in elements, there's an opacity slider here. Mm -hmm. And if you, it, if, if you don't want to change the shape of the curve, you can just dial back the opacity. And that's another way to fine tune it. So that looks pretty good to me. So that's how I would do that, probably in elements. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know if you attend the Linda Gregory's class. She probably knows the ins and outs of that if, uh, mm -hmm. if you wanted to ask her how to do local color correction. She could probably show you how to do it in elements. OK. Yeah. Um, one more here. Well, I included this picture because it's not a very good picture. And I'm going to tell you what I did and what I do different. And then I'm, I'm open to su suggestions. So uh, it's a pygmy owl at night. And so um, because it's a nesting owl and because, you know, it needs its night vision, I'm not willing to use a flash, mm -hmm. but I have kind of a moderate flashlight that for a couple seconds that I, I feel comfortable using. And um, I was using a tripod and uh, 
The camera I was using was my 62 megapixels. And that was my first mistake because it has more noise. So I'm gonna use a different camera next time. I also have a lens. I only needed the 300 millimeter, not the 600. So I have a faster lens to stop faster and I'll use that next time. Um, yeah, I shot great. this as 1 25th of a second, which is too slow. Yeah. I think I was hoping that the owl would perch, but it doesn't perch, it just flies in and out of that hole. And I'm trying to get the you know shot when it comes out. So uh, uh, I would shoot a little faster speed and I, I'd be interested to hear what people would suggest for a speed. And then also, should I use a floating ISO or should I just set it at an ISO that, that I think is gonna give a better result? So I, I just like to hear what people would suggest on a shot like this. Anybody? Okay, yeah, I would probably try floating and I also try fixed. Uh, when you do the floating, just um, see where it goes. Um, put a limit, should I put a limit on the float? Yeah, I probably would, but if it doesn't give you enough speed and then I would maybe shoot shoot one and see if it if it's enough speed on your shutter to, to to freeze it to your satisfaction but i would guess you're going to have to be at least at a 500th maybe yeah i was maybe thinking four, get, four or five hundred yeah maybe get away with the 250th but i'm, I'm guessing you're probably gonna have to be at a 500th or more if it would perch i could get down to a 60th or a 30th but it, oh yeah the bird, the bird <laughs> yeah. won't seemingly perch just right. in, in in and out I pre-focused around the hole, but you know the, the tree does not look in focus. The, the thing that looks almost the most in focus are the eyes of the bird in the hole. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think you you focus past a little bit. I must have passed focus. I was trying to focus uh, there, and then I had uh, expanded you know expanded spot focus I was using, but it didn't. I don't think it really worked. You know, wow. at night the focusing is uh, not so great on the camera. Yeah, I'm guessing when you get to the faster lens, uh, that's going to help out too. Right. So you're going to go to your other body? Yeah, I'm going to go to my other body because it, it it's, you know, I don't know what I was thinking using that 62 megapixels because I know it's bad at night. Yeah. And it has a lot of noise. That's one of the downsides of that big sensor. Yeah. So uh, oh, I've, got a, I've got a 24 and I've got a 42 megapixel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 24, uh, well, yeah. The problem with the 24 is it does the ISO doesn't go high enough on that camera, so I'm going to have to use the 42. And that's a crop frame. Uh, it's crop process. frame. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you may get some noise back. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 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 Maybe try the the one in the middle and see what you can do. Um, and uh, is this up in Madeira at the? Yeah, uh, it's up in Madeira at the. Um, there's, uh, there's three, three. There's a pygmy owl, an elf owl, and a whiskered screech owl up there, in a, in, that, in the same general area up by the picnic area. Oh, it's by the picnic area. Okay, so yeah, it's the picnic that, area. It's not that telephone pole tree or whatever is back. No, there. that was like last last year. There was <laughs> they were in the telephone pole. It was good yeah, because that's pretty far back. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I'd be you'd be probably using your five hundred at least. Okay, right. oh, that's curious. All right. All right. Well, I just wanted to get any thoughts on that as far as trying to. That's the best I could think of. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a tough shot. It is, and and, uh, and when you're wide open, um, yeah, you know, your depth is going to be pretty slim too. So, what what's the next lens that you've got? That's it. No, not the one to five hundred, but the next one. The, your, well, the, your it's uh, oh my lens. The next oh. nice yeah, it's a 100 to 400, but I was shooting at 300 millimeters when I took this shot. So, so 300, yeah. So you're going to be at one. And it's an f4. It's an f4 lens. So you'll probably be at 5.6 by the time you zoom in. Okay, maybe yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you have the flashlight on the on the tree the whole time? No. Or did just when the uh, seemingly when they put the flashlight on the tree, the bird wouldn't return. So. Okay. And, it, and it's bright enough you can see the bird come come and go? Well, <laughs> okay, the, the bird comes out about seven and it's, there's still a little bit of light. Also, I wish there was a full moon, there wasn't. Um, but by about, you know, 8.15 or 8.30, I mean, it's pretty pitch black up in the air. So yeah, um, yeah it's pretty tough. So I, hopefully, you know, being there earlier when there's still some ambient light around would be helpful too. So you could 
do it like you were doing a Milky Way shot where you get your focus and tape it down and yeah, you're good to go. But yeah, with the bird, it's a little harder because you've got uh, a lot of variables there. How far away from the tree he is and right. everything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a lot of butt, butt shots of the bird going in the hole. With, those <laughs> yeah. those yeah. are not going to win any prizes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's going to be quite a challenge. That's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to give it one more shot. Well, at least the moon's getting brighter, so. It is, yeah. Half now, so that'll help. All right. <laughs> cool, well, thanks for bringing that in. All right. All right, let's see. Um, I guess we can go down to Wendell. Okay. Well, these are all from the trip up to Utah and Northern Arizona. Mm -hmm. and, I don't think anyone's seen this before, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, that looks kind of like a horseshoe. Yeah, <laughs> I was really wondering how I got that ledge. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I was worried that I wouldn't find the turnoff from the highway to go see it, and then I get up there and they've got a two hundred car parking lot. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> now it used to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but anyway, this was taken about three o'clock in the afternoon, which is when we arrived in the area. And it turned out, I think, pretty good lighting down in the canyon there. Got yeah. some color at the, around the edge of the water, a little bit of green down there. And this is pretty much the way it came out of the camera. I did in Lightroom just uh, enhanced the reds a little bit that warmed it up. And of course, texture and clarity and so forth, but it was, didn't take a lot of manipulation to get this. The one thing I wished I'd had, this was a uh, full 18 millimeter, the widest uh, lens would go. I wish I'd <clears throat> done a two shot yes. panoramic uh, uh, yeah. overlapping to get a little more width. Yeah. But uh, didn't think of that until next day of course <laughs> so, but i did use it when we got into bryce canyon and all of it anyway uh this uh turned out as far as the colors better than some of the other photos i've seen of it so yeah, ledge in the uh, lower left are, are, is that quarantined off or can you still get down that way uh to shoot uh, uh well, I was as close to the edge as I wanted to be. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Now, so I, I, yeah, I don't know relatively how big that is. Um, I haven't been there in years, so yeah. I just, just think it would be nice to get the whole the whole wrap without that in the way. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's scary. It's um, scary. <laughs> yeah, I remember. There's another one. I think they call it gooseneck or something else. I can't remember where the heck it was, but we we tent camped. <laughs> near it we thought and when we got up in the morning we were like about 10 feet from the edge it was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, yeah i'm glad i didn't go out uh at night because yeah it was way way too close <laughs> yeah well when we were up there it was blowing pretty hard and the sand was flying and i was worried about the lens getting hit because it was stinging when the sand hit the back yeah. of my neck Oh, but I did keep the lens down away from the wind, but I didn't want to get up too exposed because I get blown off the rock or something. Yeah. Anyway, it uh, was a good uh, thing to stop by and see on the way. So, yeah. that, that's a good time of the day. We were there in the morning and the oh. light, you know, the contrast was, was not good. Oh, okay. So, yeah. But, is it partially uh, overcast or, or uh, no, I say it's cloudy, but it's pretty, uh, it's clouds in the distance, but it's pretty bright uh, sun. Uh, that day. Oh, yeah, I, I see the shadows now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it is pretty direct. And I was shooting, I guess, kind of southwest. So the sun was kind of up to up off the left corner of the uh -huh. frame there. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. 
Next one's in that toadstools area that uh, we hiked into off of uh, the highway 59 or 89 going over to Kanab, Utah. Uh, this was a mile and a half round trip hike into the, these toadstools. And it, kind of a nice area for looking at rocks and formations. Nice. So, this is the main tallest uh, toadstool out there. And this also was done in uh, light room, except the, the frames are all in topaz. I got, got busy and gussied up all the pictures with frames this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, uh, Sandy, when uh, we were looking at one of these <clears throat> in black and white, you mentioned the Goblins uh -huh. Park. Uh, I did find it on a map it, up toward uh, Canyonlands. Uh, we didn't get anywhere close to that one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, save it for another time. It's, a, it's yeah. A... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Finally, coming into Zion from the east, uh, the checkerboard Mesa Mountain it was named that because of the cross uh, kind of square pattern of, uh, on the face of the rocks. I guess it looked like a checkerboard. It was kind of the first first view of Zion that we had. To, uh, mm. Was it busy up there, Wendell? Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> uh, I imagine it was mild compared to summertime, but uh, there were a lot of people there. Uh, we didn't even attempt to drive into the park. We just uh, stayed in uh, Springdale and parked, left the car in the park you know, out of the hotel and took shuttles in, which actually works out pretty nice. But... Wow. <laughs> That's even more crowded than when I was there. You can at least get into one of the inner lots, but then you yeah. have shuttles. Yeah. <laughs> it's always crowded, though. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The, when we arrived there, we were going to park near the visitor center in the park, and the whole lot was completely full. So we couldn't even find a place to park. So we just went on down to the hotel and they let us park there, even though we were too early to check in. But mm -hmm. they, Gave us a pass to, or one of the little tags to show that we were uh, staying there, and then we took the shuttle back up to the visitor center. Wow! But, uh, it it is busy. They're talking about making res, you know, have reservation systems so that you can't oh. just show up and go in. Oh yeah, that's what. Uh, what's I don't know if his body mentioned. Uh, if somebody that, told me that. But yeah, we didn't at this time of year. You can you didn't have to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah in the summer you got to book hours in the summer. Well, during COVID too, but that was for obvious reasons. They just said we're too full. But the shuttle buses were pretty full most of the time going in yeah. and out. Yeah. Unlike Bryce, which was yeah, that always stumped me that they're they're close enough together. But I'm glad it's that way because I really. <laughs> Price and hope it stays the way it is instead of turning into the zoo that Zion's become. Oh, yeah, that amazes me too because actually I think Bryce is the more spectacular. Yeah, you know, very much so. Zion is uh, amazing, but it's awfully hard to get a photograph that yeah. gives you a feeling of being in there. So, yeah. yeah. I like your composition. I, I like what's going on here yeah. in relation to this. Yeah, your positive and negative space is nice, and this, mm -hmm. this balances mm -hmm. it nicely, too. Yeah. Oh, I, Very nice. Yeah, there you go. Let's check out the. Okay. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. This is one of those <laughs> trying to make a photograph that really gave a feeling of what it was like there and uh, maybe partially got it. 
Uh, this is an area where I was trying some of the vertical uh, panoramic uh, overlapping pictures. And I did try Lightroom on that because Photoshop wasn't working too well. And Lightroom worked better, but it just didn't quite look right. So mm -hmm. um, in this, I would have uh, wanted to get the bottom of the trees and the floor of the canyon in, but this is just the upper part of it. And so, um, so it was a matter of not finding stuff to stitch together when it when it did it, or? Well, I'm not sure what it was. It just looked kind of distorted somehow. It seemed uh -huh. to uh, match it up pretty well at the splice because I had enough overlap. But, uh, but How many frames do you have in that? Yeah, uh, I just had two. two. Did you do it by hand? Yeah, yeah, I just okay. handheld. Yeah. Um, did you twist the camera or your whole body? Uh, just raised the camera, tilted it up. Yeah, I find that the distortion is less if you keep the camera straight and just move your body a little bit rather than twisting the camera on its vertical. Oh. Because that changes the distortion of the lens. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hope that that's. Yeah. So, so just what? hold it in your hand and then just move oh, slightly. Okay. Yeah, you know, turn turn on your feet. Uh, huh. Yeah, and it seems to work a little better, I've found. Okay. Yeah, especially yeah. With wider, wider lenses because they distort so quickly. Yeah. Okay. Just a little change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder then, uh, using a longer focal length and maybe one more. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it a little more forgiving. Oh, okay. They just take more shots. That's okay. the other option. Um, okay. Practice like. Uh, Shooting a neighbor's house across the way or something, and oh, yeah, yeah. Try it that way and see what works best for you. Now the uh, the old fashioned way before these all stitched together is you just kind of line them up and then um, you know go and transform and uh, skewer distort the edges that are out to get them the best you can. And uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll overlap them uh, and and Keep, so, keep the opacity of the one in front maybe at about 50 or 60 percent so you can see what's behind it and then oh. you know if and work the one in front uh with the distortion and then not let you know and then lock it down and make it 100 percent and see how good it is and then oh. and then you may have to mask the edge and paint back and forth till you get it where you want it but uh okay that's another way to try it and see if you can salvage up what you got here and get the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I can kind of give you an example uh, that's, since I don't have the pieces, but uh, so say we're, yeah. we're here and maybe we just uh, let's see here. It's just uh, no, I'm fixed here. At the, I was doing something before. Um, Maybe we take oh, about that much, copy and paste, and then maybe we go that much, copy and paste. Okay, let's throw this other one. Out. Okay, so basically, uh, and another trick: if you got a bunch of layers, you know which is which. If you hold down the uh, the command key on the Mac or probably the control on that, you and tap on it, it'll select it. See if I tap on this one, it, oh yeah, it'll it'll select that one. And if I tap on this, no, it doesn't seem to be doing it. Maybe it's oh yeah, I used to do it. I wonder what happened here. Maybe you gotta be in yeah, there we go. Yeah. So it'll give you the option of which layer you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. All right, so say we want to take this top layer and I'm going to just hold the shift key down so it stays in the same spot. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. And let's look at this other one. I guess we can get the whole thing, didn't we? All right, well, let's take this top one. I'm going to, I'm going to hit V for you know, move and then I'm just going to hit five to take the opacity down to 50%. Mm -hmm. 
you can slide it manually if you want. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and move it over, kind of line it up. But but let's well, just say it wasn't quite right. You know, let, let's take no. this over and maybe we'll make it uh, make it uh, more like uh, you know something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe that's how it came out of the camera instead. You know, you, then what I would do is I'd take it over and kind of kind of line it up, and then then I would mess around oh. with this and, and kind of oh, get, okay. get it where you can, you know, and work it that way. Mm -hmm. once, you, once you got it where, where you're happy with it and hit okay and let's just imagine the rest of the images here then you just go in and take a mask and, and wipe out these areas and blend them in so let's just add a mask here and get a brush and uh, make sure it's in black and yeah so basically you just kind of blend it together mm -hmm. like that and then bring your opacity back up now you can either slide it over here like that or just hit zero and oh. move to it, just hit zero and then I'll take it out. Excuse me. Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so you can try, you know, working yeah. it. There's also, you know, um, uh, if you click right on these, there's warp too, which oh. you know you can, you can start adding your own lines in and and and, and you know twist oh. and play to your heart oh, okay. content if it's really off. But I, I don't know if you need that. Although it may take care of some of the barrel distortion uh, if you, you know, if you like go the opposite way, go this way if it's distorting out or the, this way, or or you can even go down or up. Uh -huh. you, know, you can you can kind of get some of the distortion out that way too. Um, yeah. yeah, takes a little playing around, but uh, yeah, yeah, I might give that a try because I, I don't know what it was that, about it I didn't like, but it probably was exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. the yeah, lens distortion. Yeah, I just counteract it, it with uh, with your own distortion by hand and uh, yeah. get it pretty close. Yeah, and once you blend it, then no one will know the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Anyway, the previous one I used a topaz tail of the bar oh, go back. Um, effect on it, which is pretty subtle, but it, it gave a little nicer color than the straight light room. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it isn't obvious, but yeah, I like the varnish. Yeah, that came out almost blue. Yeah, which it does, uh, you know, in certain light. Yeah. Kind of reflects like the, the sky, the sky yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Anyway, that's about all I had on that one. Okay. Okay. This is the, the Patriarchs. And this one is Lightroom plus a Photoshop sky. Mm -hmm. the, just a pure blue sky. I thought this worked a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Do you have uh, Luminar? No. No. You have Topaz, but you have Topaz. Yeah, you can do Topaz. Topaz yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Photoshop and Lightroom. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Bonnie, I don't know. Are you familiar with these programs or? Um... Well, I, I've heard a lot about them and okay. that kind of thing, but I'm not familiar with them. Okay. Well, let's just yeah. do something real quick here in Topaz. Um, it has a. Um, somehow I lost my preferences. So <laughs> like the square one here. I'm hoping all my looks I stay that are still here, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, nope, doesn't look like they're there either. I guess I'm gonna have to go hunting for them too. Oh well. So we're back to square one here. All right. So um, basically, there's precision contrast and precision detail, which which helps out a lot. And um, you have all these different sliders you can use. Um, mm -hmm. Micro is really, really tiny. And, and generally, I like to go 100% um, so I can see what's going on. Of course, we're already there on this one. But uh, I 
see if we can get a little bigger here. Nah, that's that's pretty good. But yeah, if you get your your image, uh, your full size image, you can get in there pretty well. So uh, so micro is the really teeny stuff like these little leaves and that sort of thing. Oh and yeah, then you've got low, medium, yeah. and high. Sometimes a high, I'll take down a little bit because you get a little more detail in the highlights. Sometimes I go too far just to see. Now it's kind of dingy. Oh yeah, yeah. But you kind of see you're getting some, some more detail than you normally would there. Yeah. yeah. So so that's before and after, and. Mm -hmm. It may or may not want the sky, although I, I kind of like what it's doing the sky. So I don't think yeah, I just ask it. You could add a mass to it if, if you just wanted to do the peaks, but in this case, I don't think we need to. Now, uh, in precision detail, um, you might want to mask the sky out because if there's any noise in the sky, it'll it'll edge it up. Or the other way to get around it is just leave the small detail alone because that's mm -hmm. what it usually edges up the mass. The yeah the uh, the grain the most so so here again we got i usually go a little too far and then go back and i usually leave the boosts alone this is mostly just bringing out the texture and the detail of the exactly rock exactly so there's there's before and there's after it's almost like a world of difference yeah that's great yeah yeah Day. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess we can go look at the sky. And now there's a little eyeball here if you want to just see what the one correction is doing, rather than if you click on the image, that's all the corrections you have before and after. But if you just want to see the particular one like detail, you can just click the little eyeball here. And that'll show you okay. just what it's doing rather than both. Um, and I don't really see that it's bothering the grain because we didn't do the low one. Um, and I could turn up the little small one so you can see what happens. Yeah. You can see how it's yeah. uh -huh. getting, getting real grainy. So I usually yeah. leave that one alone, yeah, especially if I want to leave the sky. In. So um, let's go back to fit. Oh, yeah, we got the frame and everything on there, but yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. haven't really used much of the editing in Topaz. Yeah, Most yeah those great. two tools work real well together. Luminar has some other ones that do similar things, but uh, you know, before I had Luminar, I was using these two, and they're real nice. You can do them subtly or, or a lot. Uh, and, uh, and then once you have it all set up, it's a little too much. You have an opacity slider here. So you can, oh, yeah. uh, let's see. Oh, this goes this way. All right. Um, so basically, you can take the opacity of it down a little bit if it's too much. And then that way you don't have to dust each slider. It just, it's doing all of them at once, which is kind of nice. So here's nothing. And then, you kind of bring it back in to where you want it. And when you're done, you just hit accept and you're good to go. Okay. All right. Well, those are nice, Wendell. <laughs> Thanks for bringing them in. Okay. Looks like a great trip. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, did a lot of planning with Google Maps and my big uh, AAA Indian country map. And oh. That, uh, found a lot of the places we stopped along the way. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have too much to show this week. I was, uh, I've been fairly busy with some visitors. So, so a couple, most of the, some of these are cell phone shots. And, I just took this one yesterday down at two back and uh, played around with it about five minutes before the class started. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I, I was just amazed at the detail that, that's in the sculpture that's down there. And mm -hmm. 
I, I did that dark darkness around it. Just I thought it was more fitting for the kind of subject. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've not seen this one. Is it near the coffee shop in the front? It is. It's almost right in front of the coffee shop. Yeah, that's what somebody said. I guess I yeah. must come in a different it, way. This, this is about ten feet high. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Should be yeah. easy to find then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Steve Cars had some pictures of it. Yeah, that. I remember Steve had some too. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't have my regular camera with me. I just had the cell phone, but I was pretty happy with mm -hmm. the effect yeah. and how this came out, actually. So. Nice. I had your weird cap on. Uh, <laughs> well, I have a, I have a fairly normal photo of it, but it doesn't look as good as this. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just like that. Yeah, yeah, I think darkening it up, up quite a bit. Yeah. And yeah. So. Uh, whoops, let me go back. I would just you know, touch up a little bit of this spill over here or, or soften it out. And soften it up. Yeah. yeah, just blend it out a little more. Okay. Uh, and that, that would help out. Okay. Oh, that's colorful. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is just yeah. around the corner from that, and, and yeah. I just love the colors. So, what what can you say? It's, it's a two bag photograph. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a very, very unique place, isn't it? It is. It's like, oh, boom. So, it looks like it wasn't too busy. It wasn't. It was uh, fairly quiet there. Oh, this is this is actually the back. This is a back of the build, the one of the buildings. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's not even the front. It's just. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing it. I just don't remember where. <laughs> well, it's kind of around the corner from the big, the big guy. So. Yeah. Okay. But you left the reserve parking sign in, but it I matches you know what? with your purple doorway. Yeah, actually, I noticed that window, and I should have probably. I didn't have any time. I should have taken this out, but uh, yeah. Well, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> the only the only edit I did was was actually on the phone, and that was really oh. just straighten it up. So yeah. yeah. I like the composition though that the doorway isn't right in the middle. Right. Let's get over. Yeah. Well, there's. I mean, it's a just a simple photo, but there's lots to look at it, isn't there? Yeah. All these little. Yeah. And yeah, that's nice. well, a lot of color. It's great. What did you think about the top and bottom? I was unsure whether to crop that in a tight or, or not. So I don't know. I was, my first thought was to get rid of these, you know, parking things. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I like the way the blue is playing off the wall. Yeah. Yes. I'd probably get rid of this and a little bit of tree here, though, and just keep it real graphic. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah and if you really want to get busy, you probably get rid of this, too. Yeah. Take out the parking things. Yeah. Yeah. You take that one out, too. But yeah, there's a lot there. Um, maybe you could do, so, do like a gradient. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's do a gradient on there real quick. That uh, kind of purplish color is pretty amazing, isn't it? Just really, mm -hmm. yeah, pops. yeah, <laughs> just like boom, yeah, yeah. Bonnie, do you use Lightroom? No. <laughs> okay. But, but I do use, use gradient. gradient. I've, I've oh, good. You, yeah, and you've got camera raw, so you can. Yeah. You can do that. All right. Good. Okay. So we're going. Whoops. What I, yeah, I got it. So basically, I'm going to just go up here and get my gradient, and uh, going to keep it fairly, fairly short, rather than dragging it all the way across. And then I'm going to kind of move it up and uh, kind of let it blend in a little bit. I'm going to go out so I've got more control when I rotate, because if you do it here, it's like a seesaw. Yeah. And then I would probably start with taking the blacks a little darker. And maybe maybe even the whites, yeah. Yeah, something like that might be enough. 
maybe darken the shadows up and even the highlights a little. Yep. Yeah, the highlights are really going to oh, yeah. main ticket there, so you don't need to do too much of that. Yeah, yeah. I think that would help. Yeah. Definitely. And you could even come in there with a second one, which sometimes is kind of neat. Just do another one. I'll just kind of do it right here. Uh, yeah. I was thinking of maybe just erasing these, you know, just taking these bollards out completely. So as well. Then you can, you know, just do that again. Just, you know, highlights is starting to take it down. Um, yeah, I may shorten this a little bit too. Let me take it up. Straighten it out. Yeah, maybe some more about there. Yeah. Just to kind of take them down a little bit and darken yeah. the foreground even a little more again. So, yes. so basically, yeah, there you go. So there's your before, after. Mm -hmm. Oh, I then realized how bright they were. <laughs> yeah, to you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, there you go. That keeps you on that purple. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. I'll fix that. Yep. All right. Spiky little friend. This is my neighbor's uh, century plant. He planted this uh, 25 years ago, he said, when he moved, first moved into his house. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, just taken off like a rocket. It's, oh, yeah. I just, I just snapped that this morning just to, mm -hmm. just to see it. Yeah. It is uh, spectacular. So, right? I was watching a neighbor's house, and she had three of them. And they, they over one summer, they got to be about 35, 40 feet tall, and then they started oh, leaning, leaning over toward the neighbor's house. So I, I had her call a landscaper and bring them in to, to take oh. them down, but because they don't want to fall on that house. Yeah. yeah, they're amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I just I just thought I threw, like I say, it didn't have much this week, so I thought I'd throw that in. Yeah, this might be something for Topaz where you can get uh, you know more uh, I'm crazy with it. I, I, do you have topaz, Alan? I don't know. Yes, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I thought you did, but uh, yeah. All right, so Bonnie, I don't think you've seen it. So, um, well, looks like we don't have any looks here. <laughs> <laughs> looks like my uh, preferences had everything in it. Oh boy, hmm. yeah, that's too bad. Well, you know, when, when you brought that up at first, it didn't look right, that, that program. I know, I know. Yeah, I pretty much threw absolutely everything away. Uh, I guess I'll never clean that out again. <laughs> it was one of the caches that I was clearing out, and it was like, uh, maybe I should leave it. Nah, what the heck? Nope. <laughs> um, I wonder if, nah, it'll probably take too long to get them in. All right, I guess we'll have to do that next time, Bonnie. Okay. Are all these programs at the um, camera club, like Topaz and Nick and... I don't uh, know about Nick, I know Topaz is. Mm -hmm. Neil, I'm not sure. And... Um, Lightroom and, and Photoshop, the regular Photoshop? Yes, yes. And I, and I believe Elements is there too. Yeah. Um, and are they open every day till noon or just what Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? I can't remember now. They're probably yes. starting summer hours too pretty soon. I'm in Minnesota now, but oh, at any so, rate, so when, when you I come back, back yeah, yeah. it'd be a nice thing to. Yeah. yeah. You can get trial versions just to play around um, and you can wait till you see us doing them a little bit to get some ideas of what they're capable of and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, then give it a try if you want. They're you won't reasonable. regret it. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty reasonable. What are they, like 79 for studio or fantastic you know. program? Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta see if they're offering it again because I, I they've been just mostly doing their sharpening and denoise mm -hmm. things. Um, but you know, that's another 
another thing to consider. Yeah. Anyway, this is this is a this is an image of a palm tree, one of my neighbor's palm trees. Oh. And it, and the light behind it was really really cool in the morning. Uh, just it was kind of backlit, <clears throat> and um, just the top part of it because the bottom part was a different angle. And I just went in and kind of enhanced it a little bit and put a, a, the oil uh, effect on it on in Photoshop. And then I thought I'd twist it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I thought I'd change the, because the bottom part of it uh, was fairly dull. So I, went in, I went in and just changed the color a little bit on that one just to. Hmm. Yeah, it looks great, Alan. Yeah, neat. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, there's a lot, yeah, like lots, of, lots of movement in it, isn't it? If, if you zoom right in, you can see the uh, you can see the paint effect uh, from Photoshop on the on the. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So pretty amazing effect. Yeah. Yeah. Very third dimensional. You get to look around on the right yeah. side there, like you're looking into a tumor I mean, or something. It, it was fairly interesting as it was without doing anything to it. Just it was a nice light. Mm. But, but doing some of these things there, it just kind of popped out. Yeah. Right. I almost like this crop. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. 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 yeah that could be fun. Well, with that, you see a little bit more detail, of course, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Although, if you made a print on 100% of the whole thing, you'd probably see the detail too. You know, what I was thinking actually is this would probably print out really nice on metal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be nice on metal. Because of the vibrance of the colors, right? I think that would be. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, make a nice metal print. Yeah, let me try that. There you go. Who's this little guy? Yeah, a little. <laughs> yeah, I forget his name. Yellow something. <laughs> <laughs> yellow, yellow thing. You can tell we're not a bird class. <laughs> some kind of, some kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, he's down at these uh, gardens, uh, down just off a of Brago. Oh, okay. And that's a nice little place to go for some some birds. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. And so he was just sitting there in the evening, and I like to color with uh, kind of Ukrainian colors here. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, well, thanks, Wendell. I mean, Alan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, did we do Jim Bowman yet? No. Okay, let's do you, and then we'll say Bonnie for last. Hmm. Uh, where I get the just oh. everything. Hmm. Yeah, so we've been showing uh, three, uh, what is it, three bluffs, I guess it is, and night shots. And so this was, this was uh, probably four years ago that I, I went over there and spent most of the day and then on into the evening. And this was just real after the kind of the sun sets and there was just a slight glow. Mm. Hmm. Oh. And you got the stars to show up that well with a long exposure? Oh, yeah. yeah um, well, what, what I did was I took the shot uh, separately and then did a, a sky replacement, but it was the real sky. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, just I just did a exposures. whole sky separate. Okay. Later on. 
Okay. Yeah. Neat. Yep, that works nicely. Yeah. It's got a mm. nice blend here too. Yeah. When it fades up. Hmm. Yeah, that's fun. I guess you could give it a little more dimension with a radial uh, a radial uh, adjustment there. Let's take a look. And on here, I would probably uh, let the gradient spread out more. So we just kind of do this kind of thing. And probably should have held the shift key down and keep it nice and straight. And then, yeah, we'll try it around there. We can always move it later. But uh, let's see if we put this in the black. Yeah, just a little bit. I guess we can compress it a little more and then uh, break it up just a bit. Now the other problem when you darken things down is they, they tend to get a little more saturated. So you can probably just take the saturation down a hair. Uh-huh. There you go. And again, if you want to put another one to make this darker, you could do that. Or you could just add another one. Maybe just in here. And just do the same thing. Like that. There you go. It kind of <laughs> takes some of the importance of the foreground away. Mm -hmm. And uh, not quite right, you can adjust it back, but mm. yeah. Yeah, I wanted a little bit of those flowers in the foreground to show up a little bit. Yeah, so what you could do there, um, um, let me uh, go back to open. Okay, so when you made that second gradation or even the first, um, well, let's just go back to this one. No, I don't want to do that. So just do it over again because it doesn't give you the ability to adjust it. Okay. All right. So one more time. So just take this up somewhere around there. Black down. Maybe something like that. Some of that saturation out. Now you've got add and subtract here. If you go to subtract and you get a brush and you leave auto mask on, you can take it out of the tree. Oh, there you go. And if you take the density down and you can take it out less, you know, keep building it up if you want. So it's not 100%. Yeah. Yeah, this one back, just uh, hold your option key down and uh, you know, take the density or, or the flow, I guess. Yeah, and just get the feather back up a bit. Yeah, you can, you can darken it back down a little bit if you want. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's how you do that. Um. When you get out of the mask, try taking the temperature slider into the blue a little bit and see what see what yeah, that does. That's a good idea for the, for the picture. Yeah, and kind of cool it off a little bit. It might be too much, but yeah, I didn't want it too much. Yeah, so maybe somewhere a little in there brings that blue up a little bit. Yeah, maybe it's the red. 
go red there, or I can go green, bring the greens up a little bit. Yep, good suggestion. Very good. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. No. Okay. Ooh, oh, wow. That's nice. One yeah. round. So that's just a close up on the same same evening, but before uh, before things got really uh, the clouds were moving in and out. So uh, this was kind of like the last of the clouds going through. Hmm. But um, thought it looked kind of like a little bit of a, what, um, I don't know if you guys have seen William Curtis. No, oh, sure. So some of his, his shots that monument can't, can't uh, Valley, you know, kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a la his style. Mm. Mm. Nice. Yeah. yeah, amazing clouds you got there. Yeah. There's a real neat little subtle thing going on here. You've got all these little light spots going here, and then in the distance, you got just a couple yeah. over there and a couple here. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Mm. Almost like little stars. That's great. Nice one. Cool. Hey, this is uh, down in Bisbee again. We're back to Bisbee. And uh, local artist, I thought he did a great job. And I did kind of like a little bit of that cartoon again to kind of make each one of those feathers sort of pop. But other than that, um, just got a little bit of the, uh, the colors to, uh, to pop a little bit more too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. The cartoon uh, was that in uh, Topaz? Yeah. Topaz? Yeah. Okay. It's, I don't know if you were here last week when I showed the cartoon. Yeah, uh, I wasn't. Ah, uh, right. Mm -hmm. But I used I used quite a few of them, and last week is kind of this cartoon look. You can uh, review it on on um, Topaz and see what you like. Yeah, yeah. I'll go take a look for them. They got so many options. I haven't seen. I know two thirds of them. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's a deep rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. I like the composition. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow! What's this? Okay, this is my uh, my Steve weird kind of shot, <laughs> and um, so I I kind of just had it. I don't know if you guys have seen this down in Bisbee. This uh, shot of an angel down there, and um, so he's he's made out of steel, uh, and made out of different. So I just kind of thought, wow, what would be kind of like an angel descending from heaven? Hmm. He might be a bad angel. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did you? Where did you get the sky? The sky was just uh, just a separate shot. So I I layered it. Hmm. Yeah, nice. Now, it, it would be easier to do if it was still the layers, but I would probably just lighten this up a little bit to get some separation here or just put a little something on the edges, you know, just to get some shape. 
So, well, I think you might have some detail there. I guess we can go into camera and see. And yeah, it it was uh, it's a bit rough in spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty far along though. Won't take much. So again, we've got our local. And we'll just make sure auto mask is on. Although I don't know how well. No, that's not going to mask that out. So I'm going to just get a negative here, and I usually take the feather down and make sure we get the flow back up. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll kind mm -hmm. of wing it and see what we get here. If we get it all or not, I think somewhere up in there. It's about right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just see what we got in there. Yeah, yeah, it's opening up a little bit there. Yeah, it was dark to begin with because it just fell in a shadowy area. Yeah, let's see if we can squeak a little bit clear. Yeah, clarity's helping a little bit. Maybe take a little dehaze down. Okay, so now we just got to go in and clean it up. So now that we see where it's spilling over on the background, you can just clean that up a bit. So it's just, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, just gonna go back. And yeah, yeah, that's good. Details and details. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all in the details, man. There you go. Okay, so at least you got a little separation there now. Um, and then the other thing you can do is just kind of. Oh, see if we can get this locked on here. There we go. You can, you know, set up a new layer and just take a brush and maybe pick one of these light blues here. Um, oh, maybe something like that. Maybe make it a little brighter. Okay. Just kind of blend those in. Yeah, I'm just going to be real rough with it right now. But basically, I'm going to take that and then I'm going to look at my blending modes here and see what maybe overlay. Uh, oops. Yeah. Oh, well, let's make it up too dark. So we have to do lightener screen. Um, yeah, let's try lighten. And then we'll just take this opacity way down. It's just got oh, yeah, that, just a hint of it in there. OK. And then once you have that, then, then I'd add a mask and just start shaping it you know, to how you like it. And uh, I would use a, a little bigger brush so that it's got a, a nice way to fall off. You know, just, just a little bit in there. Might be enough. Maybe make it a little bigger, brighter, yeah, something like that. Yeah, just, just to break that edge. Um, I guess you could go with a brighter color. Um, now, if you lock the, uh, the transparency, it's locking. I don't want to lock the paint. Um, or actually, the easiest way to do is just leave these alone. Let's unlock these. All right. Let's uh, we'll go to edit, fill. And then just see where it says preserve transparency. Uh -huh. Leave that on there. It's only going to paint where you put stuff. So, um, and then, you know, you could 
in this case, I'm just going to throw some white on there just so we can see what the difference is there. And then, and then you could just take it way down. There you go. I see. Yeah. So you can doodle that a little bit more, but yeah, that could work. Okay. okay. Wow. Learn something. That's what we're here for. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Oh. Nice. Mm. Yeah, so this is uh, another sculpture in Bisbee. And I mm. did um, kind of wanted to do keep the the starry night theme going. And um, but I kept the uh, this bit, this is a big metal uh, dove with a, I guess, uh, an olive branch in his mouth. Oh, okay. And um, so I like the, just the bird within a bird. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this is three layers. This is what the hawks and the doves. Huh? Yeah. Nice. You thought about making the uh, flying bird a little bigger? Um, yeah, I kind of, I didn't didn't know if that should be big or not so big. I kind of played with it a little bit and I went back to the original, but uh, maybe it would be bigger or better bigger. Yeah, maybe 20, 25%, it doesn't need to be much. Yeah, try it if you like it. Good. If not, take it back where it is. <laughs> cool. I like cool. that. Again, uh, you know, add a little more depth to it. You may want to just gradient the sky a little bit. Or if you could gradiate him a little bit too, I suppose. That's something you can play with as well. Okay, cool. Thanks for bringing those up. Okay, so let's get body stuff. Oh, nice. Okay, this is just from Antelope Canyon. I think I have three of them that I kind of played with a little bit. Well, what time of day was this, uh, Bonnie? It was in the afternoon. About one o'clock, one to well, maybe a little later. It's you know we had to meet at one, maybe two o'clock ish or something. Yeah, and I I brought my tripod and I did one picture with a tripod, but it's like no, <laughs> <laughs> too complicated. You know we were moving too fast, and but I did do the thing where I took the same picture and three different exposures. So, yeah. and I didn't do much to this except that there was a like a chunk out of uh, the rock on the upper left, and I darkened a little bit the entryway, and then there was light hitting the edge. So, but looks amazing. Yeah, I wonder if maybe a little more contrast might. Yeah. Just spice it up a bit. Let's take a look here. All right. Um, I mean, the easiest one is contrast, uh, brightness contrast, but I usually like to use curves, but let's just see what that does. Yeah, it just doesn't quite give me the control I want. Okay, so I usually tend to go toward curves because it just gives you a lot more to do. And generally what I'll do is somewhere in the middle here, I'll just drop a point and then I'll come down here. This is the darkest area of the image. This is the lightest area of the image. This is kind okay. of the tones, okay? So if you want to make the whole thing overall kind of a little darker, you can just pull this down a bit. 
And then if you want to add more contrast, you can take the quarter tones, which is halfway between the mids and the darkest, and just pull those down a little bit. And then take the three quarter tones, which is between the hottest areas, and bring those up. But see the way this is starting to blow out here? You want to keep mm -hmm. that detail. So that's between here and here. So you want to drop another point in there and just kind of drag it back down. And maybe move yeah. this down a bit. There you go. So just by how you place these, you can really manipulate the image. So, so that's... Oh. oh yeah, much different. That's the difference there in contrast to just doing straight contrast. Yeah, I think you have a little more control. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it takes a little practice, but... Uh... <coughs> Is, would that be on Photoshop Elements, Wendell? Uh, yes, I think uh, it may not have as much control. I don't. I ne yeah. never used it that much. Yeah. The other one you can you can use is uh, which I'm sure is in elements is just uh, levels. Yeah. Yeah. And levels is uh, it's just, it's more letter. You don't you don't really have points. You've got you know your output and your input. So if you want to change your midtones, you grab the middle and you drag it right or left. And it just kind of takes everything down. And then you can take your highlights and brighten them or darken them. And you can take your shadows and make them even deeper. So that's another way to do it. Uh, and then if you want to just bring your highlights down a bit, you can clip them down so that they don't block up. You can just take them down a little bit. I wouldn't go quite that much. Maybe something like that. So that's another way to do it. Uh, which might be a little easier to do in the beginning than curves. Mm -hmm. You know, they all have different looks depending on how far you take them. And then, you know, if you want to adjust again, just double click on it. And maybe you want to come back this way a little bit. There we go. Mm. Nice. Yeah, so just practice with that and see what you come up with. Mm. Okay. Uh, and it, it wasn't a blue sky that day. It was very windy too, like you said, yeah. Wendell, that afternoon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very windy, but yeah, I just lightened this and I darkened that front part a little bit because it was too light. And mm -hmm. And then I guess if you wanted to cut down the brightness of the sky at the top there, uh, just a uh, quick selection or something like that probably would okay. uh, uh, define that area. And then you could just do mostly, I suppose, uh, exposure or luminosity down. And that might darken it a bit mm -hmm. without touching anything else. I like the shape and the, the texture, the feel of that rock, <laughs> almost like cloth or a drapery or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, neat. Yeah, I think it might be nice to darken this down a little more, uh, especially just this one. Darken that top part even more? Just here. Yeah, so you got this one dark, this one medium, this one lighter. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so can you do that selectively? You can either do it with a selection, but I tend to like to do it with a mask because it's got a nicer edge than a selection would. So again, you could just uh, levels or curves, whichever you want, and just look at this area here, okay? And just maybe something like that. And then with your mask, again, you, you, if you hold down your command on the Mac or control on a PC and the I, that'll reverse it to black. So now it, it's not doing anything until you paint it in. And you 
make sure white's on top here and you get a brush. Okay. And then you take your brush. That's too small. So I'm going to make a bigger one. And just brush it in where you want it. And with the X key, you can go back and forth between black and white. White erases. Black puts it down. And there you go. Yeah. That's now, cool. now that you've got it uh, there, what you might want to do is just to get, and just double click on the uh, the little icon there, and so maybe you might want a little less, something like that, mm. or more. You know, you, you can go, go more, you can go less, but yeah, I think I like it about there. You're looking at that top part, so it's like dark, medium, a little lighter. There's just the whole top part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do the whole top oh. if you wanted. Yeah, it just depends on where you paint the white. It'll come in there. Um, and just out of curiosity, let's just uh, go back to this mask and, and let's uh, go back to white and let's see what it does to this highlight up here. Yeah, not much because we're hitting the in the top edge. So you probably have to make another one for that. So let's, let's uh, just do another one. So we'll go back here to the levels. Although I'd, I'd prefer to use curves, but I don't know if you have it or not. So we'll just try that. And we're just looking at this area. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to bring it yeah, down a bit. Yeah, something like that. Maybe we can clip it a little bit. Now that's probably a little too much, but once we invert this and start painting it in, we'll see how it works out. Yeah, that's probably too much. And again, if you get messy, just you know, switch to uh, black. Go in there. And Paint the areas that where you spilled over. Smaller brush, get in there. There we go. Close enough brushes here. And then you can go back, double click this, and maybe you might want to brush it up just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Now you can also put a color in there and that might help too. Ooh. That's what I was thinking of blue sky, I think would have helped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so that um, you can either take a, a layer, you know, a new layer, or you, or you can take a color layer. But well, let's just get a new layer and you know, we'll go over here. Yeah, I'll kind of pick a nice blue. That should be all right. Okay, I'll just kind of. I'm going to hold down the uh, the command key and just get that mask. Okay, actually, I think I can. Can I copy this mask? Yeah, I think I can just drag it up. Yeah, there. Oh no, that it just. Never mind. That did not work. Um, I'm just going to hold it that way. All right. So then we'll make a mask. So I'm just masking this area again on this one. Oh, sorry, I just keep hitting the wrong stuff here. There we go. Okay, so now I just kind of get a bigger brush here. Just put the blue in on this. Make sure I, your brackets are around the image part, not the mask. There you go. Okay, now that might be a little too much. So put the capacity down a little bit. Something like that, and then just clean your mask up and you're good to go. Hmm. Yeah. You can also try different blending modes and see if any of those make any sense. Uh, no, I, I think maybe just something like normal or yeah normal or darken 
Yeah, darker might work a little better. Again, if you go back to, go ahead. Question. So I was just going to ask, what lens were you using there, Bonnie? Um, I think I was just using my regular lens. Um, okay, what is that? Forty-five, I think. No, it's actually smaller. Yeah, I don't know, eighteen to. Geez, I can't remember. It's fourteen to forty-five. Hmm. people here yeah and the other thing you can do is if you want to spill some of that into your area here you could just go back to the mask get yourself a, a bigger brush make sure your hardness is down so it's soft and uh, take the opacity down just kind of Make sure you got white. Just kind of paint it in. If you want. You get a little bit of that going down there too. Looks like we might need to extend a bit of it. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, there we go. Kind of marry the two together there. Hmm. Uh, that's better. Okay. I think this is pretty soft, but it, you know, it seems to go with the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the face, the little profile of a face here. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's just more of a, an abstract light and shadows pattern. I like it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You think of maybe a little vignette on it? Mm-hmm. Oh, that could work. Nice. I don't think I do much else. I like the softness of it. Mm -hmm. Increasing the contrast is going to take that away. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite places. Oh, yeah. Uh. Still got some snow in the crags there, huh? Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, 30, 32, 33 degrees, oh, wow. wind blowing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wow, was it still that cold when you were there, uh, Wendell? No, uh, it was more like 50, but it was cold. We had our jackets on all day long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was getting down to close to freezing at night, though. Not bad. 9,000 feet up yeah. there. Oh, the top. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 9,000 feet long. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, I love the um, hoodoos. They were yeah. great. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm trying to think, is this the inspiration point? I, it, I can't remember. There were there yeah. so many that we stopped at, but it was closer <laughs> to the bottom. Yeah. It was one of the first stops. OK. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I probably got about the same picture, but I don't remember which one that was. But yeah. all, each one of those stops was different. It yeah, it was it was beautiful. I loved oh, yeah. Bryce. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had you know, I'd hurt my knee, so oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm walking around with my hiking poles, oh. taking trying to take pictures, but we had planned oh. to go hiking, but just couldn't, you know, couldn't do oh, it. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, it's a pretty steep one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 
Looks like it'd be really nice to go hiking down in the canyon there. Yeah. But oh, yeah. we don't do it either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty neat when you get down in the hoodoos. Oh, yeah. Imagine. I didn't go too far down, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take much to get down there. Coming back up, that's fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Better make sure you can get back up. Yeah, yeah it takes a while. Do you think this should be a little darker or? I'd add more contrast. contrasty. Yeah, a little more contrast. And you could probably play around with uh, the vibrance a little bit too. Uh, now normally I'd use a different program, but, uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll show you what a different program can do. Let's go to Neo, I'm in our Neo. Yeah, boosting the white balance a little bit toward the red might oh, bring yeah. up the color too. That's yeah, but I did to cheat a little bit. Yeah, so so you've got presets that you could do, um, which basically you just click and look. <laughs> yeah, it's like one click stops here. Uh, they give you different things if if that, that's what you want to do until you get used to using the program. Uh, <laughs> snowfall, but yeah, you could do something like that. Um, even that, and um, once you have that, you can go up into edit and then adjust accordingly. Now, if you want to change any of these, there's two things. There's tools, which haven't been touched yet, but the preset did all these edits. There's seven of them, OK? So it looks like there's a little vignette here. And close that. They work with super conscious. And you want to see what they do. There's a little eyeball here. You just touch the eyeball. And it doesn't look like there's much there. It just took a little out of the highlights in the midtones. Um, color Hermes. Yeah, you know, that's where they, they brought the brilliance up a bit. So you kind of see that. That's where their reds are coming up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just maybe you want to back that off a little bit if it's too much for you, or you can add more if you really want to get crazy, but that's probably a little too much. Yeah, maybe something around five to eight looks pretty good. And then there's, let's see, it's got color already. So that's your saturation and vibrance here. So um, kind of look at the vibrance first. Yeah, maybe a little vibrance would be nice. And then they used landscape, which has this golden hour. I'll turn it mm. off. Golden hour makes it kind of warm as well, which was what window was describing by changing mm. your color tone a bit. And then you got dehaze, which you know kind of gives you a little more contrast. And if you had like a a background that was kind of hazy, it would it would mm. sharpen it up a bit. But you don't know, have much. You know, maybe up in here a little bit, you can see the difference. Um, there, but yeah, I would just use a little bit haze. And say this wasn't very rich. If you do foliage enhancer, it'll I'll overdo it. But you can see it. Well, it doesn't look like it's finding it. Yeah, sometimes it'll find the green leaves and it'll bring them up really green. You know, um, this is the one slider that I think is worth the price of admission. It's called enhance. Yeah. That's the difference before and after without it and with it. It it just does a lot of nice stuff. So basically we reset this whole thing back to the original and um, just mm -hmm. we just went to edit here and just went to enhance and started there. You can see just that one slider. Oh, yeah, so that made a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically that and the sky replacement and uh, the sun rays that it offers. Uh, pretty much worth the price of admission, mm -hmm. uh, you know, alone, let alone all the other tools they add to it. But yeah, it, it, it uh, definitely does, does a lot for you. So yeah, that. I'd say for this picture, I would probably just do that and maybe um, landscape. You know, I'd add a little golden hour to it. 
and uh, maybe a little dehaze. Yep, and that'd probably be all I'd do to it. Mm -hmm. That's probably all it needs. Yeah. Oh, go from you. there to there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And elements using the camera raw uh, should give you some of the controls too that you could probably get some of the same things that Sandy just did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, well, like the, the color temperature, um, yeah. light balance. So yeah, so if we went to camera raw, let's see. All right. Again, you know, you take your temperature warmer a little bit, take your contrast a bit, play with the clarity a bit, and your dehaze. And then you could look at vibrance and I don't know if I do saturation. Yeah, maybe just maybe just like two or three. I don't think it's gonna take much. But yeah, that could help it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks a lot better. Yeah. So either way it'll work for you. Okay. Yeah, the same thing on this one. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice yeah, one. That, that's neat. That's excellent. Mm, thank you. I'm surprised there isn't somebody cliff dwelling back in here. <laughs> what a wonderful place to live. <laughs> that would have been nice back in the day. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Got a thousand BC. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, they look like castles almost. Yeah, yeah, they do. I was looking at pictures of, there's a place in Turkey called Cappadocia, which uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually cool. hollowed out these things and, and they've lived in them for centuries. And yeah. this looks like it would be a nice candidate for that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Well, thanks, Bonnie, and welcome. I'd like to see you. Yeah, you, you okay. I feel like it's way over my head, but I've learned a no. lot through Wendell's group. I'm sure I'll yeah. learn a lot here. Well, yeah. uh, please come I've back. learned a lot since I've been here, so you got a good chance for it, too. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and uh, we record them, so you can always go back and kind of pick up things you miss. Or, or want to hear again, so that's helpful. All right, let's see. I I miss the ocean. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going over to the coast. Oh, yeah, oh, that's lovely. Nice. Oh, wow. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. So so these are work out in California coast uh, pictures today, mostly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I really mm. love the reflections when the when the tide yeah. goes out. Just yeah. So yeah, I bet it was cold when you were taking these. Not too bad, you know. I, had, I think I had a, a light jacket on. It was in the fall. That's beautiful. Yeah, probably fifties, sixties. You know. Oh, it's, it's nice with the reflection and the cloud converging mm. to the right. There. Yeah. yeah. And I and I, I really love all this mist from yeah the, yeah the surf rolling up there yeah hmm. and another view oh, yeah. further yeah. down the line it's nice and I implemented a lot of the things we discussed today with you know burning and dodging areas adding contrast and color, bringing detail out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because these hills were pretty dark in the original. It's nice you had no people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the lighthouse, I can't remember where this was. Well, there's a person, a couple people there. Can't remember what 
think this might have been California. And this was uh, wow. hanging over the San Juans with uh, Jim Murphy. Oh, oh. Can't remember what island that was, but I just kind of caught that out the window. That's um, one of the most northern islands in the San Juans. Um, that's a kind of a cool lighthouse to go to. Um, I think uh, it's just north of Susha. What is the name of that island? I can't think of it right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That was a great time. Yeah. I was thinking, boy, you got a drone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are those birds down on the lower left? On the sure looks like it. Yeah. yeah. Seagulls. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Lots of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it must be going out. Yeah. Yeah, now this was real hazy. It was, a, it was a not a very pretty day when we went, but uh, dehaze and a few things in Luminar picked it right up. Yeah. You got just enough yellow on the the weeds and stuff on the Tundra, right yeah. side. To, yeah, that's not all. Let me, let me just uh, see if I can find that one. And oh, yeah, here's the before. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just give you an idea where we started. We went to Russia. It's not always kind of flat anyway, but yeah. Okay. It's pretty good, too, because you're shooting through a green window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Now we're in Tahoe. Cold water, but really clear. Yeah. And this is up in Glacier. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like that purple in the clouds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Early morning. Yeah. And oh. Oh, back down Oregon coast. Maystack, is that? No, it's the one north of there. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Yeah. Again, a uh, Reflections from the outgoing tide is just amazing. Yeah, really? a person doing a phone shoot there. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> just to give it some scale. Oh, that's a haystack. That's haystack. Yep. Mm. See mm. somebody with a view camera over here. A little moon there going on too. Yeah. Yeah, this is further down in California coast. Someone just parked their kayak and went in. Just a little inlet. You coming up to Washington this summer? I'd like to. I just sold my RV today. Oh, <laughs> oh. so uh, I don't know when the next one's coming. I'm All right, it's kind of waiting on. Uh, I put a deposit down, but you know, with all the distribution. Oh, there's gold in your tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I may have to may have to go up there another way. Yeah, that's along the California coast. Mm -hmm. This is down in what they call the, the, the Lost Coast up, you know, north of Eureka. Mm -hmm. Easy just after sunset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is unusual. So many rocks sticking up. Most of the time, it's more mm -hmm. like your haystack and yeah, single, yeah, you get a couple uh, big ones. Yeah, yeah, and then San Francisco, of course. Oh yeah, down underneath by the park. Mm -hmm. 
think this was an iPhone shot, actually. Hmm. Some birds in there. Yep. They all feel like you're, there's hardly any people that live. Yeah. I try and do that. There's generally a lot of people behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Just coming out of the frame. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a little patience, but you can usually get, get a pretty clear shot. Yeah. Uh, this was from over in Sausalito. Mm -hmm. Before we. Yeah. Three, three and three. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 A little sailing regatta going. Yep, that's it. Cool. Nice. Water but, shots. We like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be killer cool. cool.